Okay, you're going to go down and open up GarageBand. Once GarageBand's open, um, again, you can utilize Magic GarageBand. Just create a new project, however you want to approach it. I'm just going to create a new project. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, obviously, loops would be another way to go. And create this as sound effector uh, one. Keep it simple. All right, we're going to be using our desktop today just to save things so it's easy to locate. Uh, you could create a folder. I'm just going to again use my desktop for this demonstration. So I'm just going to add some beat tracks to this. Um, so quite a few different things here. I'm going to add a bass in first. And let's see. Okay, just a simple club beat. And I'm going to drop it here about two after the uh, first beat. And then I'm going to, again, Command C. Command V and paste that in the loop section through. And I let it kind of roll now through that, and that'll be kind of the end. I'm going to drag one Command C, Command V, and pull that in. And that's kind of where we're going to end on that one. All right, so let's go back and play that. Very easy. Uh, last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to throw in um, a little uh, processed. I'm just going to drop that in towards this end part. And I'm going to start right back to the beginning. stop. All right, pretty simple. Um, we just want to get something basic. We can play around with the sounds, whatever you want to get later. I'm not going to spend too much time in this tutorial on doing that. Uh, the next thing you need to do is you're going to go up to your top of your menu bar. I don't know if you can see what I'm going to be hitting here as I'm recording this, but I'm going to go up here and go to where it says share, and then you're going to export song to disk. Okay, and basically we're just going to use mp3 encoder. We're going to keep it simple. Um, high quality, good quality. It's up to you. Right now, it's just only going to be driving the. Um, it's only going to be driving the um, frequency uh, of our sound effector. So, for that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pre press compress, export. Again, I'm going to save it to desktop, sound effector one, and save. Quick and easy. All right. I'm going to minimize GarageBand. A couple different things you can do if you have QuickTime 7, it's the optimum. It's very easy to save a WAV file there for your sound effector. Uh, in all likelihood, though, that's been nixed from Apple's lineup. You have QuickTime 10. Um, in our case, we're going to be using uh, SoundBooth, Adobe SoundBooth, so Applications. Okay, and you're going to go to Adobe. Let's see, Adobe SoundBooth. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. This is a little bit thicker or fatter program uh, than we probably need for doing something like this. A simple audio conversion program is probably out there for free. Uh, but again, for our purposes, we're going to be using Adobe Sound Booth because it is available. And this is a pretty meaty product. And we'll allow some uh, other things that we could do, play with the pitch, uh, etc. Uh, same stuff that you could do in actually GarageBand. Uh, but we're going to just export out of this with that file. All right, so we're just going to go to File, Open. And I'm going to go down here and open up my, from the desktop here, if you don't have desktop selected, select that because that's where we saved our file. And sound effector one, mp3. And again, this will work for any mp3 that you have here. I hit the space bar. And there's our sound rolling. Again, we can change pitch and timing, so if I wanted to slow this down just a little bit. So say for instance I want that time stretch to be a little bit longer. We can put it up all the way to 200% there. So I'm going to process that and render that. Basically we're just kind of doubling the length of time and it should slow down our track substantially. For this we can clean up the audio, remove a sound if you wanted to. 
crank the volume up so our frequency is a little bit higher and it affects our uh, MoGraph. Our MoGraph effector is a little bit more, um, is affected a little bit differently. The higher the frequency, the more it's going to affect the motion of that. So again, if I go back here to the beginning, Z that and bring it back to our normal. Just for sake of demonstration, we just want to export this. Again, there's lots of effects you can add in there too, so it's a lot of fun to play with. Um, so we're just going to go to File, um, Save As, and we're going to actually go down here where it says Format. We want to say this is a waveform file, and just save it right to the desktop. So you're going to see a dot wave as opposed to .mp3 on your finished file. Very simple. Uncompressed, you want to make sure it's 44.1 on that 16-bit. All right, and I'm going to go ahead, it won't let me compress anything on the wave file, obviously. Save that, we're done. Hide Adobe Sound Booth. Now if I open up Cinema 4D, and come in here and just add a simple cube, simple polygon features. Um, I'm going to go make this I don't know what, 50 by 50 by 50. Just keep it simple. I'm not going to fillet any surfaces, keep the polygons going. Add a MoGraph, a cloner object to this. And we're just going to be affecting these clones, basically. Um, and in this case here, I'm going to offset them. Oops, not offset them. I'm going to uh, increase their per step to 100 so it spreads apart a little bit. Because again, just for this. Uh, Tutorial, we're keeping it really simple. Have cloner object selected, go to MoGraph, sound effector, and then that sound effector is where we're going to put our WAV file. So it's going to say sound file right here. Click. And then we're going to go down, remember, on our desktop, if you don't have that, select it in here. And go to where it says sound effector WAV. Make sure it's the WAV, not the MP3. Open it. Go ahead and turn your little speaker on here so you can hear what you're rendering out. Now remember, your song's a lot longer than three seconds, 30 frames per second on our timeline here. So if you want to hear the whole song, you might want to increase those frames quite a bit. All right, I'm going to drag this over like that. My sound file's in there. Um, if you want to, pull this up a little bit more. And go ahead and just put the effect on. I could play in here, but that sounds playing. Or I can just press play here, and then you can see how it's actually affecting the up and down motion of those cubes in the cloner object. And the reason, again, it's affecting that is just because the position has been set to 50. Again, if I change that to 0 and change it to 50 on the x-axis, it should move on the x-axis. Yeah. And if I change that to 0, and for instance, change the rotation on the heading. I'm not going to notice that too much, but maybe on the pitch to say 200. You're going to see those cubes rotate. And there's a ton of stuff you can do with this: a sound effector mixed with a random effector, a delay effector, a lot of this other stuff. Experiment. Um, again, with most spline, it'll affect any of these objects, and so the sound effector is very powerful. Uh, we just kind of touched on how to get it started. And that's it.